Hey, Steph listeners, hear about the latest trends in the travel industry with the brand USA Talks Travel Podcast. Right now, listen to special live from IPW interviews featuring U.S. Travel's Jeff Freeman. DMOs are at the heartbeat of U.S. Travel. Liz Bittner from Travel South. A lot of key gateway markets are back. L.A. Tourism's Adam Burke. We all win when we all partner together. Plus, brand USA's Stacey Melman and Jackie Ennis with international travel trends and Chris Thompson's farewell finale. I'm Mark Lapidus. Join us for brand USA Talks Travel on your favorite podcast platform. Brand USA Talks Travel. Good morning from Skift. It's Friday, January 15th in New York City. For daily updates in your inbox, subscribe to the Skift Daily Newsletter at skift.com slash daily. Support for this podcast and the following message come from TD Ameritrade. Everything's customizable these days. Your trading platform can be too. With Thinkorswim, you can customize screeners, charting, and stock forecasts, so the market is always tailored to you. You can get started at tdameritrade.com slash thinkorswim. And now, here's what you need to know about the business of travel today. Delta Airlines is mapping out a three-phase recovery plan for the return of corporate travelers, prompting executives to forecast the optimistic possibility of profits by summer, writes Airlines reporter Edward Russell. A new survey of the Atlanta-based carrier's largest corporate customers found that 40% plan to resume 2019 levels of business travel this year and another 11% in 2022, Delta CEO Ed Bastian said during the company's fourth-quarter earnings call on Thursday. Conversely, another 42% of large corporations were unsure when they would return to 2019 travel levels, and 7% said they would never fully return. All indications are corporate travel is ready to start coming back and will come back pretty aggressively beginning the second half of this year, said Bastian. The return of corporate road warriors is critical for the airline's recovery. While a smaller percentage of overall flyers than those going on holiday or to visit relatives, business travelers spend more on things like expensive last-minute tickets and posh business class seats. This makes a corporate recovery key to the industry's aim to begin generating profits again. Next, January has seen a flurry of financial investments for the corporate travel sector, writes corporate travel editor Matthew Parsons. Several technology companies have revealed funding rounds this month, and rather than the cash propping them up to survive, they're being regarded more as a vote of confidence in better times ahead. While business travelers remain static, these startups are gearing up for recovery and ready to play a role in helping organizations lower their costs in the future. On Wednesday, Barcelona-based startup Travelperk announced it had acquired U.S. business travel platform Next Travel, signaling its intention to expand stateside. Meanwhile, Sales Trip has just raised $1.4 million in seed funding led by Floriot Group, a private investment group known more for its presence in the aircraft leasing sector, East Asia travel app Traveloka to boost its flights and hotels content. We finish with the end of an era. Just a few years ago, Norwegian Air was launching new subsidiaries in Ireland, the UK, and even Argentina as it planned to remake intercontinental travel. Today, the struggling airline admitted its wings have been clipped. It will now focus on its core market in the Nordic region and operate a handful of short-haul European flights and eliminate long-haul routes. It also will return its fleet of Boeing 787s, central to its international expansion plans, to lessers. Irish media report 787s have been arriving at Shannon Airport for their eventual return. Norwegian grounded its 787 fleet in March last year due to both issues with their Rolls-Royce engines and as demand for international travel began to evaporate because of the pandemic, writes Airline Weekly editor Madhu Anikrishnan. Low-cost international flights, particularly across the Atlantic, have been a tough problem for airlines to solve. In the last decade, several airlines have tried, and some explicitly copied Norwegian's model. It didn't end well. Iceland's Wow Air similarly tried to break into the low-cost transatlantic market and failed, liquidating in 2019. For more travel stories, head to skiff.com. To find these stories and more insight into the business of travel, subscribe to the Skiff Daily newsletter at skiff.com daily. 
Hey, Skiff listeners. Hear about the latest trends in the travel industry with the Brand USA Talks Travel Podcast. Right now, listen to special live from IPW interviews featuring U.S. Travel's Jeff Freeman. DMOs are at the heartbeat of U.S. Travel. Liz Bittner from Travel South. A lot of key gateway markets are back. L.A. Tourism's Adam Burke. We all win when we all partner together. Plus, Brand USA's Stacey Melman and Jackie Ennis with international travel trends and Chris Thompson's farewell finale. I'm Mark Lapidus. Join us for Brand USA Talks Travel on your favorite podcast platform. Brand USA Talks Travel.